Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Vibrant You. Today, we are talking about the ultimate morning wellness routine and tips for optimizing yours. I'm going to share with you the three main pillars and a bit of a formula to creating a morning routine that I've used to create and optimize and adapt my own personal routines in the morning for the last many years. We are going to talk about the main obstacles that may come up when trying to stick to or create new morning habits for ourselves and how to break free from them. We're going to talk about my own personal wellness journey and my own morning routine and inspiration for creating and optimizing yours. First things first, why do we need a morning routine? So for me, my morning routine is really a set of non-negotiable steps and wellness practices that really set me up for the day for health, for well-being, for ease, for balance and success. So our bodies and minds really thrive with consistency. Our body loves routine. So many hormonal and digestive and cognitive events are based off of an innate rhythm that we have inside called our circadian rhythm. So when we create this morning routine for ourselves, we are attuning ourselves to nature. We're attuning our biology to the rhythms of nature to really optimize our well-being on all levels. And of course, our morning really primes ourselves for the day, right? How we wake up is often how we feel throughout the day. We've all had the experience of like waking up on the wrong side of the bed. And, you know, when our morning, when we don't wake up so well, we don't feel so well throughout the day. So I'm a big fan of having an epic and simple morning routine. Let's get into why morning routines or healthy habits don't always stick. So if you're anything like me, you've heard of so many amazing techniques and practices whether it's meditation or you want to get into a movement practice or this biohacking trick or that wellness tool and the reality is is that there's really two main obstacles that will show up for us that will prevent us from creating the habit to begin with that we want to or not being able to stick with it and those two main obstacles to creating healthy habits in the morning is either number one you're giving yourself too much structure or number two, you're not giving yourself enough structure. So the general rule with morning routines that really stick is that you want to have enough structure to give you clarity and direction and momentum and to be able to lean into the comfort and the ease of knowing that you just, you have a structure, you don't need to think about it. You just flow through your morning routine without too much mental effort but also not being too rigid that our morning routine isn't sustainable or it becomes this kind of like all or nothing habit for you where we're asking too much of ourselves, we're not being flexible and we just simply do it for a few days and then give up. So balance is really key. We want to balance this like, you know, masculine energy of structure and having a plan, having a to-do list with the feminine of letting things flow and letting things be flexible and meeting the moment as we need to and adapting as we need to. So for example, what balance can look like, let's say you want to bring in exercise or some sort of movement practice for yourself in the morning. And let's say that if you have too much structure, you say, okay, I'm going to, or you're asking too much of yourself. You say, I'm going to go to the gym for an hour and a half every single morning. It's a little bit too rigid. I love the gym. I go often. However, I know for myself that I can't commit to that realistically every day forever and ever so it's too much masculine too much structure too rigid if i set that standard for myself and life happens and i'm not able to uphold that unrealistic standard for myself then i feel like i failed and the momentum loses its traction and i give up let's say if we were to balance that structure with a more feminine fluidity and adaptability it can look like this Okay, my commitment to myself is that I'm going to do five minutes of a movement-based practice every single day. That's my masculine container. That's my rule for myself is non-negotiable. I wake up, I do five minutes of movement in the morning. The feminine is our flexibility of how we do that movement or maybe using our menstrual cycle to guide the movement that feels good in our body on that particular day. So let's say some days in the month you want to get up and do five minutes of HIIT training, you know, and do something really intense, jumping jacks and, you know, burpees and push-ups and squats. And maybe the next morning you wake up and your body just feels like doing some mobility work or some gentle stretching or maybe some sun salutations, whatever it might be. 
So this is the art of creating morning routines that stick, is we wanna have this middle path of just enough structure and just enough flow and adaptability. So I wanna share with you now the three main pillars for creating an epic morning routine. So the formula is this, you wanna do something for your body, something for your mind, and something for your soul. So let's say for the body, you wanna incorporate something like movement practice or self-massage uh, technique in Ayurveda called Abhyanga. Maybe you wanna do some dry brushing, maybe a healthy breakfast is your commitment to yourself or having a nice delicious lemon water upon waking. Whatever practice feels most nourishing and exciting and delicious for your body. This becomes your body self-care every single morning. The next one is the mind. So what can we do to nourish the mind? A few possibilities come up for me. You might start a meditation practice. You might do some journaling in the morning. Maybe you're committed to getting some early morning sunlight. In a previous podcast episode, the 10 biohacks for mental performance and mental clarity, which we'll link up in the show notes. You can check that one out. There's a whole episode on biohacks for your brain and optimizing it. But we talked about morning sunlight and the value of that on our mental health, our cognitive health, and all of the neurotransmitters in our brain that make us feel good and motivated for the day. For our mind, it can also be as simple as just like a healthy habit that creates discipline and devotion and shows ourselves our commitment. So something that I've done is like when I first wake up in the morning, I make the bed. And that's just me. The very first action of my day is an act of self-care to myself, knowing that when I walk out of the bathroom a few minutes later, after having getting ready, I know that my bed's made and it's clean and it feels good. And so for me, that's really an act of self-care. And I've personally incorporated that into my morning routine where the first act of the day is a positive one that's supportive, that builds that self-discipline and proves to ourselves with evidence that I'm a committed person that's capable of adapting routines. And it's something so small, but so powerful. There's so many possibilities of practices and tools and, and lifestyle hacks and, and biohacks that you could incorporate to nourish the mind. And then the third is our soul or joy or, you know, ourself, something that really connects us to us. So for the soul, we might incorporate something like a gratitude practice or some sort of spiritual practice that you enjoy, whether that's meditation or a form of prayer or mantra chanting, or for years, I used to practice just silence in the morning. I just wouldn't speak. It's helpful when you live alone, but uh, I would just practice silence in the morning for actually at that point in my life, it would be the first few hours, at least three hours, I would just be in my in-depth morning routine or maybe some sort of like embodiment practice. Doing something every morning for your soul, something that brings you joy, that connects you to you, that brings mindfulness, self-awareness, calm, peace. We're going to bring that energy with us into the rest of the day. The thing with morning routines is that we can go way overboard. If you are anything like me, type A, pitta dosha, you know, Virgo, you know the type, is it's really natural for us to go into this all or nothing mindset where, you know, we're going to like pull out our sticky pad or create this big long list of this lengthy to-do list. My morning routine used to be three to three and a half hours every single morning. And I did that for a span of like five, six years. <laughs> and because it was so intensive, it worked great for the chapter of life that I was in. I lived a very monastic ashram life of a, being a yogi. And I would have like three hours of meditation in the morning and spiritual practice and a lengthy to-do list of things that I would do for my well-being. However, of course, that's not realistic. And I certainly don't practice that. My morning routine is like 15 minutes now. And so different seasons and different chapters of our life, we really, we need different things. So permission to adapt, permission to grow. This is an important piece of the puzzle. So I want to share with you now three helpful tips for making these routines stick, right? And we'll, we'll get to creating your own, you know, meditation or uh, morning practice for yourself in a moment. But let's get into tips of like how to really create these practices in a way that they will stick. So number one is we wanna create a morning routine that we like. We wanna make it enjoyable. When you're going through and deciding what's my one practice for my body, one practice for my mind, one practice for my soul, what are the ones that I enjoy? Don't put 
hit training <laughs> for your body every morning if you hate it. Don't put a certain kind of meditation that you don't like. Like this, yes, we want to cultivate self discipline and we want to do the things that we know are good for us, which sometimes we don't always feel so excited about, right? And yet, how can we make it this practice that feels nourishing? If it doesn't feel enjoyable and nourishing, why would we do it? So we don't want our brain, we don't want to have to convince our brain you should do this, go into obligation and make our wellness routine a list of chores. We want it to feel good. So make sure that the practices that you're bringing in or the routines that you're bringing in feel good, should be enjoyable. The second tip for creating your morning routine is we want to have this middle path, not too much, not too little. So making sure that we're balancing, again, that discipline, that structure with adaptability, with flexibility. For me, the ultimate morning routine is like 15 minutes. You know, back in back in the day when I was doing three, three and a half or often even more, I had a very free schedule and my responsibilities were very different at that time than now. I own a business now and my work asks for more from me and relationships and just like real life, which I'm sure you can relate. Some of you have kids or businesses or work or partners or just responsibilities. So we want to make sure that it's not too much, not too little. It's enough to move the needle, it's enough to have an impact, but it's not so much that it feels like a self-care chore list that doesn't feel exciting and feels more like adding stress to our day, trying to get it all right and do it all perfect than something that actually brings value and wellness and health and ease into our lives. Okay, and then the third main tip, this is really helpful, it's helped me when adopting new practices, is to attach a new habit to a previous one. So let's say that there's certain things in your morning routine that you're already doing, so much so that you don't even consider that they're a part of your routine. Even when I was uh, writing out, you know, mine today for my notes to share with you, I'm like, what is my morning routine? And some of the things I even had forgotten because they're just so a part of my lifestyle now that it's not a practice or something I scratch off a list, it's just how I live my life. So it doesn't even feel like a practice anymore. However, what we can do to create new habits that we might wanna bring in is to attach a new habit to a previous one. If when you wake up in the morning, you're already going to the kitchen and you're making yourself a cup of coffee, and that is you don't even think about that being a part of your routine anymore, it's just how you live your life, it's just what you do. What you'd wanna do is then while you're making your coffee, attach a new habit or a new action to that. Because we know that we're gonna make the coffee every day and it's gonna trigger the possibility in our mind of doing a new habit. So let's say you, the new habit you wanna bring in is a movement practice or a meditation or a mindfulness practice. Let's say it takes five minutes for your coffee to do its thing, right? It takes time. So what we're gonna do is put on the coffee, it's doing its thing, and in those five minutes that we're waiting for it to get ready, maybe normally in that time we would just hang out, check our phone, kind of flow through our morning, bring in a wellness technique that you wish. Do five minutes of movement in your kitchen while you're waiting for your coffee. I don't drink coffee, but I drink tea or I make my morning Gatorade or I let my tea steep, for example. And in those five minutes, it's been really helpful for me to cultivate a new practice by doing five minutes of meditation during that time and set a timer or five minutes of movement or five minutes of journaling or whatever it might be. So that's a really helpful tip for habit building is attach a new habit to a previous one. It's going to be the trigger in your mind to do the new thing. And it's going to be so much easier to build that consistency on top of the previous technique. Okay, so I want to share with you now my morning routine. My morning routine might be different than yours. You don't have to follow mine. You can use this as inspiration, as ideas. And in fact, I don't recommend my morning routine for everyone. Mine is nice and short and sweet now. It does vary. And I want to just mention as well that these are kind of like the more non-negotiable ones that I think I do almost every single day. Um, however, there's different periods and phases in my life where I may bring in more intensive self-care in my morning routine or more practices, or maybe there's some things that I do once a week in my morning as it fits and as it flows. Feel free to use this as inspiration. This doesn't have to be yours. Adapt it, make it your own and something that feels really good for you. So my personal morning routine is I wake up nice and early. So I wake up just naturally. My body wakes up around six o'clock a.m. Uh, 
I rarely need an alarm. That's what routine does, right? Is we create this biological consistency where our body just wakes up at the same time every day. So I, for myself to really be at my best and to feel most vibrant is I really thrive with a good old eight hours of sleep. So I'm making sure that I'm getting to bed nice and early so that I wake up naturally at 6 a.m. And typically these are the the best hours to go to sleep. Typically we want to go to sleep around 10 or 11 at the latest and be waking up around 6 when the sun is starting to rise, when our circadian rhythm is starting to activate and cortisol starts to wake up in the body, serotonin starts to wake up as the melatonin from our sleep chemical goes down, cortisol, serotonin go up and our body's most primed to wake up in those nice early morning hours. I wake up nice and early go to the bathroom. I'll spare you all the biological details, but we do want to, and as a gut health expert, I talk about these things, is we do want to evacuate our bowels within the first hour of waking. This is just a standard practice. We want to make sure that we're having a nice healthy bowel motion within the first hour of waking, making sure that our detox and elimination channels are nice and open, that we're clearing out all the toxins that have built up from over the night and eliminating. Okay, so the first practical thing that I do is I go into the bathroom and I have a beautiful, delicious oral care routine that I really love. So practices pulled from both Ayurvedic medicine and healing practices and from more modern functional medicine practices. Um, There's a series of a few techniques that I do and I love my oral health routine so much. It's something so precious to me. So I'll probably dedicate a full podcast episode onto just biological dental care and how to optimize our oral health care routines for having nice, clean and white, vibrant teeth, but also for our whole body wellness as there's such a connection between our oral health and the health of the rest of our body. I go through and I do something called tongue scraping. So if you're with me on video, I have a little tongue scraper, which is basically this u shape like thing that you can either buy online or you can buy at a local pharmacy maybe or any Ayurvedic place will have it. You can also use the side of a spoon and the essence of it is this is you're just going to stick out your tongue and five to seven times you're going to scrape from the back of the tongue to the front of the tongue. What this is going to do is it's going to pull that white coating, the buildup of toxins that you've been breathing out all night uh, and from the that have climbed up from the digestive tract as well and have rested on the tongue, is it's going to eliminate all of those toxins. So once you start, I think I've been doing tongue scraping for... I don't know, it's been over 10 years. This is, I didn't even think about this being a part of my routine because it's just a part of my lifestyle. I love this thing. It's going to eliminate a lot of those toxins that have built up from overnight. That white coating on your tongue is full of bacteria and can be full of yeasts and heavy metals and things that you, your body has worked so hard to detoxify from overnight. And what happens is, is when we wake up and first thing, go and have a cup of coffee or have our breakfast or have our tea, we're basically swallowing down all of the toxins that our body worked so hard to try to eliminate. So tongue scraping is a great way to help eliminate those toxins by pulling them off of the tongue. The next thing I do in my oral health is I have an amazing um, tooth powder that I just make myself, a remineralization powder with things like bentonite clay and baking soda to alkalize the oral environment. There's activated charcoal to pull out toxins from the gum tissue and some other clays in there to help remineralize the teeth so passionate about this can't wait to do an episode on tooth remineralization and healing cavities you know in a holistic way and receding gums and all of these things but that's a great technique is just brushing with a toothpaste powder next is i make a nice mouthwash for myself a remineralization and alkalizing mouthwash so none of this is it Listerine, none of these alcohol-based things, no toothpaste with fluoride or chemicals, that's a whole other topic. But yeah, I make my own mouthwash with just filtered water and sea salt for all of the minerals with baking soda and clays that are full of minerals and some essential oils, food-grade essential oils as well. And your mouth just feels so clear and so amazing. I love this practice. Okay, so beyond my oral care routine, the next thing that I do is I refresh my senses by splashing my face with water. So I have a very boring skin routine. It's very internal for me. I don't do much for my skin or my hair or anything topically as I believe that, you know, radiance on our skin and our 
our hair really comes from within. Our skin is simply a mirror of what's going on inside of our internal world. So if our gut is burdened, if our hormones are off, if we're holding on to a lot of toxicity in our body, that's when we start to have skin issues. So I have quite a boring skincare routine. Literally, I wake up, splash my face with water to refresh my senses, cold water on my face, you know, to stimulate the vagus nerve, get my serotonin flowing, get my cortisol going, basically to wake me up and I splash my face, my ears, rinse my mouth with water and that's so refreshing for me. I may or may not, I have like just some natural skin oils, whether it's just like straight up organic coconut oil or I have some natural oil blends with like argan oil and rosehip oil, those types of things. I use those sometimes, but if I do anything on my skin, it's probably going to be in the evening as here in Bali, it's just so hot and so humid and I don't always love having something heavy on my skin when I'm probably going to sweat anyway. The fourth thing that I do when I wake up is upon waking after these first routines, I go and I take my upon waking supplements. So there's certain herbs or supplements that I will take on an empty stomach. So I try to take it as early as I can away from food as there's a few more things in my routine before I will have my breakfast. So certain brain boosting herbs like to be taken on an empty stomach. So my supplement protocols are always changing and I might do a full episode just on my foundational ones that I take all the time. But at the moment, I'm taking uh, Brahmi for some brain boosting. I'm doing a bit of a, a functional medicine detox at the moment and moving into a bit of a gut healing protocol that I do just for health and maintenance once a year. And there's certain supplements that I'm taking upon waking, like binders and certain probiotics, um, certain antimicrobial, antifungal herbs, those types of things. So upon waking supplements... The next thing that I do is some body care. So I love in my morning routine, almost every single day, most days, I'll do something called dry brushing. So if you're with me on video, you can see I've got my dry brush with me here. And this dry brush is a powerful tool to wake up the body, to open up the body's detox pathways through the skin. So we're awakening our circulatory system, our lymphatic system. And all that we're going to do is take this dry brush that you can buy at a pharmacy or online. And you're simply going to brush the skin while it's dry. We're going to do long, broad strokes towards the heart. And that's bringing the blood and the lymph towards the detox organs to process toxins to eliminate like that. So dry brushing is an amazing tool. And my gosh, when you do it, you just feel like you had a massage after. You feel all tingly and your circulation is so good and you just feel awake and alive. So better than coffee, I swear. Okay, in my body care, I may do Abhyanga. I don't actually do it every day. It's a bit messy for me every day. And I always like shower when I come home from the gym. So if it's a non-gym day for me, I'll do a little bit of extra Abhyanga, which is a beautiful Ayurvedic self-love massage with sesame oil or medicated Ayurvedic oil. And you're basically just massaging your entire body. So we're doing nice circular motions around the wrists. We're doing long broad strokes along the bones. And again, moving towards the heart. And this is great for soothing the nervous system. Anyone with a lot of anxiety, especially in the morning, Abhyanga is like this delicious soothing balm for our nerves. And it's just so nourishing for our entire body and our mind. After I do that, I do dry brushing, then I'll do Abhyanga, that oil massage, and then often I will end it with a body scrub. So I've just made at home, in Ayurveda they call it Udwartana, which is a combination of different herbs and grains blended into a powder that we apply to the skin. And it works as a, again, lymphatic drainage. If you have any sort of water retention or puffiness, which my constitution is more of a, in Ayurveda we call it Pitta Kapha, that's my Prakriti or my birth constitution, my body tends more towards water retention and those types of things so that works really well for my body like I said I don't do, I do dry brushing almost every day because it's just so quick so easy and you don't have to like shower anything off it's not messy I just do this for two three minutes and then on non-gym days I might do the Abhyanga oil massage on my head my face my body and maybe the body scrub after then I hop in the shower the next thing that I do in my morning routine is I hydrate. So every single morning I start my day with nice warm water and or a nice natural Gatorade. So I shared about this in a previous episode that I will link up in the show notes below my delicious natural Gatorade recipe for hydration. In essence, it's simply going to be filtered water, 
pinch of sea salt, a little bit of lemon. I add some greens powder and it's just such an elixir for our body. So all night long, you know, we're sweating and oftentimes we breathe through our mouth when we sleep unconsciously and uh, we need to replenish all of the electrolytes and the hydration that was lost through the night. So our body thrives with hydration and the fastest way to kickstart cognitive health and mental performance and good mood and kickstart our digestion is really to start our day with this morning hydration in the form of warm water or natural Gatorade. The next thing that I do is every morning I try to get some sunlight. So I'm pretty lucky here in Bali. My house is actually open to the elements. So the sun comes right into my house. Often what I'll do is while I'm doing my dry brushing or whether I'm doing my abhyanga or my body scrub, my house is all enclosed. So I have big high walls everywhere. Maybe you wouldn't do this at home depending on your house structure. But I actually do it in my yard so that all of the powder from the exfoliating goes onto the ground and it's fine. Nature's going to take care of it. And I do that in the sun. So I'm getting that nice early morning sunlight directly on my skin, into my eyes. And I know that boost that I feel when doing that and how that supports my serotonin and my dopamine production, these chemicals that give us happiness and motivation. The next thing that I do is I move my body. So movement is such a non-negotiable essential part of my morning routine. And what I do, because again, if I commit to doing 90 minutes at the gym every single day, it's not realistic, nor do I actually want that. I want rest days. I want to be able to listen to my menstrual cycle and feel guided intuitively based on how energetically I feel that day and what my body might need and desire most. So the masculine structure that I have for myself, the discipline is that I'm committed to doing at least five minutes of movement in the morning every single day. Sometimes that means literally just at home in my bedroom. Some days if I'm feeling a bit more tired, I went to the gym two days in a row the last days, so my body's a little bit tighter. So this morning I just did some mobility work a few minutes and lots of like shoulder rolls and stretching through my spine and my sides and spinal twists and some gentle like hip mobility work. Other days if I'm feeling really energized I might do jumping jacks and burpees or skip rope or those types of things. So that's my commitment is five minutes of movement and I get to choose let my feminine inside of me choose okay well how do I feel to move today? Five minutes is the container that's my commitment but how do I feel letting our intuition guide us, listening to our body? That's key. And then every other day for most most part, either I'll go two days in a row to the gym, one day off, two days on, one day off, depending on work schedule as well. Sometimes it's just every other day that I'll go to the gym and I'll do 45 minutes to 75 minutes at the gym, a little bit of cardio, weightlifting, some mobility stretching at the end, and that's it. So that's my movement practice. Next, what I do is after my movement practice, I do my morning smoothie. So every single day, that's my breakfast. And I love that my brain doesn't have to choose. Our brain really thrives with routine and consistency. If we wake up in the morning and we have to decide every single piece of our self-care routine, we are going to use up all of our brain's mental energy and decision-making power in the first 15 minutes of our day. That's why we love a morning routine that has consistency. I love that I get to wake up in the morning and my lifestyle, my morning routine is pre-decided for me. It's just a part of my life now. I don't question it. I don't think about it. I just flow through the routine and I know that it makes me feel good and that I enjoy it. Every single morning I have a smoothie. I have the same thing every single day to pull out the decision fatigue. I might, as I desire, add in different pieces to my smoothie, but it's typically pretty simple. Organic blueberries, greens powder, daily nutritional support powder from Equal Life, which I'll link up below. This is the amazing protein powder that I take that has a full serving of multivitamin, multimineral, antioxidants, amino acids, all the goods in it. And water. That's what I add into my morning smoothie. Some days if I feel inspired, I'll add chia seeds or hemp hearts, or I might add some maca powder for energy support or cinnamon or turmeric. Like there's some little things that I might add for inspiration. But again, that masculine structure is there where you have a smoothie every single morning and then I might switch it up and add a banana or add some mango or make a chia pudding with it or something like that. And with that morning smoothie, I'm always taking my multivitamin and whatever supplements I need to be taking for that day with food. So a lot of our vitamins and minerals we want to take with food versus on an empty stomach, whereas a bunch of the herbals that we might take or certain brain boosting supplements, for example, we may want to take on an empty stomach upon waking. 
The final thing in my morning routine is love and joy and gratitude. And over the years, this has taken so many different forms. For years, I meditated every single morning for 90 minutes to up to three hours. And that was in that chapter of my life, really nourishing and really fulfilling. It's not as practical and realistic anymore. So some sort of just love, gratitude, joy, something for my soul that feels really connecting. So some mornings that might be a meditation or a mindfulness practice. Practice. It may be sitting down with a cup of tea and just being still and silent. It might be journaling or creating a gratitude journal or sometimes and often it's simply having a moment of cuddling my delicious, beautiful kitties. <laughs> and that's something that really nourishes me at the deepest levels. This is my personal morning routine. Again, it changes, it, it's adapted over the years and we want that permission to change and adapt to the different seasons and chapters of life that we go through and not be hard on ourselves. Maybe you've been through that experience too where at a certain phase in your life you were so on top of your morning routine and it was long and extensive and you felt amazing and then maybe your life changed and you had kids or you know you started a different job or you're just simply in a different chapter of life we want to pull out any shame or any guilt in that and let this moment be what it is and create a routine that feels nourishing and exciting that you wake up to with excitement that you know is going to nourish you at this time my invitation for you is to write out what is your morning routine what is that clarity and that discipline and that structure you want to create for yourself? And what are the parts that can be flexible? So again, we want to make it enjoyable. We want to have this principle of not too much, not too little. We can attach it to a previous habit to allow that habit to stick with a bit more ease. And the three pillars or the formula for our morning routine is that we want to have something for our body, something for our mind, and something for our soul. So I would love to hear what is your morning routine? What are some things that you might want to bring in? I would love to hear. Please come over to Instagram, share in my latest post in the comments or send me a DM. I want to hear all about your morning routine. And if you have any key takeaways from today, I love having these conversations with you. So that's all for today. I want to thank you so much for listening here. And I look forward to sharing more with you in another episode real soon. Take care.